In 2019, it's becoming increasingly tougher to keep track of the news. We sat down with our writers to go over stories that may have slipped through the cracks this week. So one of the big problems that YouTube's had in the last few years is that when big news breaks, like the Parkland shooting or the Las Vegas shooting, oftentimes in their news section, uh, if you're searching for that item, a lot of conspiracy theory videos and false flag videos will show up alongside mainstream news like in CNN or Fox News videos. So now they're changing the algorithm so that it won't surface those false flag or conspiracy theories as often, it sounds like, for too long. What their algorithm did was it would just look for things that were starting to catch on and go viral, and then it would feed you more of that. Obviously, a lot of people get their news from YouTube, and we should expect them to see like regular news that's told responsibly. Michelle Carter is a 22-year-old woman who is going to jail this week for her role in her boyfriend's suicide. She was convicted in 2017 for sending texts that encouraged him to commit suicide, so playing a role in that suicide. But I think it's important because of future cases, essentially, and what it means for how people behave on the internet. Our lives increasingly are conducted online, whether in text messages that are like ostensibly private or on social media. Somebody has access to these records that is a third party. You know, nothing is really just between two people anymore, or it's certainly not to the degree that it was. And it just means that more and more of our lives can be made public. This week, Trump signed an executive order called the American AI Initiative, which laid out his proposals for how to keep the United States at the forefront of AI development. The executive order in total had five points, but one of them is, is particularly interesting. It mandates that federal agencies should prioritize AI in their R&D budgets. What it really means is that he's giving federal agencies free reign to start investing in and developing algorithms to perhaps automate decision making. For example, police stations across the country are already using something called predictive policing, which uses past patterns of crime to predict future patterns of crime. The problem is that you have data from the past that reflects all of our problems with racism, problems with sexism, problems with discrimination of so many kinds, and we're using that data as predictors for the future. Mark Zuckerberg himself, about a year ago, uh, put out a whole thing about how he wanted to encourage what he called meaningful interactions on Facebook. Um, and this was essentially uh, how he was able to justify a lot of big algorithm changes. And Mark Zuckerberg came out and basically said, the reason we're doing this is because we found that the research shows uh, using Facebook actively is good for you and makes you feel good and um, ultimately makes you feel better about yourself. And he said this was really backed up by research. Stanford put out this study about um, a couple of weeks ago that basically refuted uh, what Mark Zuckerberg said. The researchers found that there wasn't a difference between people who used Facebook actively and people who used Facebook passively. And now it turns out based on this uh, Stanford study that, you know, the changes may have been made uh, on faulty data. 